This is DJI's brand new action camera, DJI Osmo Action 4. For action. Compared to Osmo Action 3, this one has a bigger sensor which means it captures more light. It has better dynamic range which means more details in the shadows and highlights. Also this one records gyro data. What that means is if you don't want to stabilize your footage in the camera, you can do it later on with the software. If you want to adjust the sharpness and noise reduction level, you can do this in this camera as well. And on top of that, this thing is 18 meters waterproof compared to 16. So I guess the question is, is DJI Osmo Action 4 any good? Well, this is going to be an easy one. All right, right now I'm in the tunnel that I always do the tunnel test. Um, there's a construction happening over there. But I'd like you to guess which one is Osmo Action 4 and which one is Osmo Action 3. This is Action 4 and this is Action 3. Now let's take a look at it in a control environment to see the low light performance difference even better. This is shot on Osmo Action 3 in 4K 24 frames per second. The color profile is normal. Field of view is set to wide. White balance is set to 5500 Kelvin. Shutter is manual at 1 over 50. ISO is set to auto and right now it is at 12800 and enhanced image quality is turned on. And this is Osmo Action 4. Same settings, except Osmo Action 4 has a low light image enhancement mode and this is the difference it makes combined with its new sensor. Now let's take a look at Action 3 again and Action 4 again. But what happens when there's a lot of light? Well, first let's zoom in to 300% then look at this footage from Osmo Action 4. Now put Osmo Action 3 next to it. I don't know about you, but to me, the sharpening on Action 4 seems much more pleasing. And here's the thing, this is the highest sharpness level. And I can set it to medium, which makes things a little more pleasing, depending on your taste, or low, and then add my own sharpening later on if I feel like it. If you don't want to deal with sharpening or noise reduction at all, there's also two presets for you called Default and Portrait. Since Action 4 has a bigger sensor, in this light setting as you can see when I fix my shutter to 1 over 50, Auto ISO is set to 190. When I do the same thing with Action 3, ISO is set to 330 which means Action 4 can gather more light. Also, higher the ISO, higher the noise. By the way, did you know that you can remove the lens protector on Osmo Action and gather more light? Look what happens when I remove the lens protector on Action 3. ISO goes down to 320. When I do the same thing on Action 4, ISO goes down to 180. And the good news is, if you want to use your action camera like this, to capture more light, DJI included a lens hood that you can attach to your Action 4. Just keep in mind that when lens hood is attached, Action 4 is not waterproof. Well, thank you very much for watching and thank you so much DJI for sponsoring this video. What? what? You, still wanna, you still wanna see the intro? Shall we go on? Let's do it! And here it is, DJI Osmo Action 4 Adventure Combo comes in this nicely designed box. Inside the box we're greeted with two more boxes and an extension rod that may look tiny but when it is extended it becomes 1.5 meter long. So I guess we can call it a grower. In the accessories box we're greeted with an adapter mount, 
with a new rubber padding on top of it that makes Action 4 fit snugly. Some papers, USB-C to USB-C cable, the battery charger case which can be used as a charger. I charged my iPhone many times with this case and the three batteries while I was in Tokyo, Japan. A lens hood and four little seals for the mount screws. In the action case, we're great with the protective frame which also allows you to mount the camera vertically, two locking screws, curved adhesive base, another adaptive mount with shorter legs and Osmo Action 4 itself. Compared to Action 3, they are almost completely identical. They use the same battery, the same mount, the same doors. They both can run over a USB-C power source without a battery in them. The only difference is the protective lens mount size is bigger on Action 4 so they don't fit each other. Oh, and the rubbery part at the bottom of Action 3 seems to be gone on Action 4 and the speaker holes are different. The sensor on this camera is the sensor that we know and love from DJI Mini 3 Pro and it is a very capable 1 over 1.3 inch sensor. The sensor in this camera is a little different. The principle of how it works is a little different compared to Osmo Action 3. This is a quad bear sensor camera and I guess that's why they removed the HDR mode from Osmo Action 4 because it's quad bear it can record with higher dynamic range Thus, you will not need the HDR mode. When it comes to minimum focus distance, the minimum focus distance of Osmo Action 3 was 30 centimeters, and on Osmo Action 4, it is 40 centimeters. It's kind of like, this is 30 centimeters, and this is 40 centimeters. But because the sensor is different when it comes to the footage, especially in the ultra wide angle mode, is a little narrower compared to Osmo Action 3 and the file size when you take a photo is a little smaller. But Osmo Action 4 can shoot JPEG and RAW at the same time. With Osmo Action 3 you can shoot JPEG or RAW. You gotta pick one. Just like Action 3, Action 4 can record in 10-bit 420 as well. 10-bit allows the camera to capture richer colors. On Action 3, if you like to record in 10-bit, you either have to record in HDR, which can only go up to 30 frames per second. And technically, since it's not BT 2020, it's not the HDR HDR. But you can turn on the Cine-like color profile and record in 10-bit, which gives you the most dynamic range and a lot of color information but also it requires a lot when you're editing that footage. On Action 4, there is no HDR mode, which I didn't care about, but also there is no D-Cine light. Instead, there is D-Log M. And D-Log M does not require a lot, it's just a flat color profile. So I didn't know what to think in the beginning. All right, now, Take a look at this. This is shot on Osmo Action 4. And this is shot on Osmo Action 3. And Osmo Action 3 is shot on the d like color profile. And this is shot on d -Log M. And as you can see in the Luma uh, chart over here, there's a big difference, especially in the highlights. The highlights are blown with Osmo Action 3, but because it is a, a log file, I can bring the highlights down and I can actually recover the shadows a little bit as well. But with Osmo Action 4, there's no recovery, but the only thing blown out is where the sun is. So I can go like this, maybe. I give it a little bit of um, saturation. And as you can see, I see more of the blue sky. 
I see more of the clouds, the buildings and everything. And uh, as you can see, the blown out part in the Luma chart it gives away the, the dynamic range we're getting. So yeah, I think I like Osmo Action 4 more. When it comes to digital zoom with Osmo Action 4, you can zoom in two times. And with Osmo Action 3, you can zoom in four times. But because it is a digital zoom, unless you really don't need it right away, you can zoom in however you like in the post later on. Just like Osmo Action 3, the back and the front screen supports touch. And one thing I like is when you hold this vertically, when you go into the menu, you can see more items. The connection speed of your device to Osmo Action 4 is fast, but it is not as fast as, for example, Insta360 Go 3. But this connection is more stable. What that means is when you mount this, for example, when I mounted this in the front side of my car, when I sat in the car, I was able to mount this phone on my dashboard and control the camera while I was reviewing Insta360 Go 3. Even though it was mounted right in front of my car, I was losing connection. Also, you can monitor while you're recording even at 120 frames per second. So this is being recorded at 120 frames per second. When MIMO is turned on, you cannot monitor on Action 4. It's the same with Action 3. But let's get out of this app. When there's no app connection, you can monitor 4K 120 on the active screen. So if this screen was active, we would have monitored 120 there. But if you go down to 4K 60 and anything below that, you can monitor on all three screens. The reason I'm mentioning this, when you start record, if you have a GoPro and you're monitoring your GoPro using your smartphone, as soon as you start recording, the screen of your phone will go blank because of a copyright troll trolling GoPro. When it comes to stabilization, just like Osmo Action 3, you don't have to worry about holding this device steady in your hand. There is Rock Steady, and then there's Rock Steady Plus, which consumes less battery, but it has a higher crop. And then we have Horizon Balancing. And then if we go to 2.7K, we have Horizon Steady. All right, right now Horizon Steady is turned on, as you can see. The action camera is not actually level and even if I tilt it, it stays being level. What that means is up to 45 degrees of angle. I don't have to worry about making sure my action 4 is mounted properly. It will take care of that for me. If the camera is traveling sideways, as you can see here, during this mode is turned on, it may tilt a little, but after a while it fixes itself. Horizon Steady works up to 2.7K on both Action 3 and 4. What Horizon Steady does is keeps the horizon level even if you rotate the camera 360 degrees, where Horizon Balancing can stabilize up to 45 degrees. However, you can use Horizon Balancing in all resolutions, including 4K 4x3 60 frames per second. compare the audio what you hear is now coming from Osmo Action 3 and wind noise reduction is turned on the directional sound is turned off and now what you're hearing is Osmo Action 4 wind noise reduction is turned on it actually started blowing more wind right now let's compare it to Action 3 as well and um, there is no directional audio when it comes to Action 4 Okay, right now, uh, Action 3's directional audio is set to front. Let's see if that makes any kind of a difference compared to Osmo Action 4. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the wind noise reduction. So 
watch out for your ears. Okay, right now the wind noise reduction is turned off on both cameras, but on action three I picked the directional audio to pick sound from front. I wonder if this makes any difference. Now let's turn directional audio off. Now directional audio is turned off, wind noise reduction is turned off. I'm on my one wheel and there's wind blowing towards these cameras. So I wonder how they're doing. One thing I realized when you first put the battery into the devices, Action 4 turns on a little slower compared to Action 3, but after that first one, they turn on almost at exactly the same time. Also, the mount seems to be changed a little bit. This is, in case you don't know, this mount is a super fast magnetic mount with these little claws where it just sits in and the section camera is not going anywhere and you can take it off super easily like that. It's very useful and I think this jiggles a lot less than the previous one. So there's improvement on the mount as well. And on top of that, there are tons of accessories you can use. And I tried some of these accessories and they're not bad at all. The wrist strap is a great way to have a free hand while pointing the camera in the direction you like. I especially like the one where it mounts on top of your hand. I get this, instead of holding it and pointing it, it's just stuck to my hand, so my hand is free. The backpack strap mount can be very useful during events like CES. The neck mount is not that comfortable, but it can be adjusted very easily and it is very stable. Mounting kit has useful accessories as usual. And the ND filters are fantastic because they both fit Action 3 and 4. They're mounted by friction, which is something I love. And it works great. These filters didn't come off even when the suction cup gave up while I was driving and the camera fell on the asphalt. Now let's talk about overheating and battery life because this has a bigger sensor. What is the situation when it comes to overheating and battery life? I ran this test four times to be able to give you the best result possible. But also keep in mind that when I ran these tests, there was a heat wave in Los Angeles, California. I recorded in 4K 60 frames per second continuously with a fresh battery and cooled down cameras. Sometimes Action 4 had better battery life, sometimes Action 3, and I guess that depends on the battery. In all of my tests, Action 4 was a little hotter compared to Action 3, and towards the end of the test, Action 3 was around 135.6 degrees Fahrenheit, where Osmo Action 4 was around 138.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Osmo Action 3 recorded for 1 hour 28 minutes and 23 seconds and Osmo Action 4 recorded for 1 hour 31 minutes and 12 seconds and they both stopped recording because they ran out of battery. By the way, I used the same settings for all of my tests and none of the test results were same as the other. One, two, three. But they were pretty close. For example, in this test, Osmo Action 4 recorded for 1 hour and 28 minutes and it shut down due to overheating. Where Osmo Action 3 recorded for 1 hour 34 minutes and 29 seconds and shut down because it ran out of battery. I shot with this camera in Venice Beach during heat wave. I shot mostly in 4K 120 frames per second, but they weren't continuous shoots of course but the camera was mostly on and i used as much as i want without holding myself back i didn't even see the overheating side now let's talk about things i wish this camera had maybe they will come with a firmware update i would really like to see the shutter speed on this screen i can see the shutter speed when i go here it is displayed up there but i want to be able to see it on the main screen i also would like to see overexposure warning you can see the overexposure warning on your phone but it would be really nice if i can see here as well sometimes i had trouble swiping up the front screen because we're filming right now i'm pretty sure it's gonna work every single time yep <laughs> but while i was out there yeah, it's actually working great right now. 
So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a user error. There you go, it works great. And another thing, the screen looks great even if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, but sometimes I wished it was a little brighter. And I see a little bit of fringing on RAW photos where it seems to be taken care of in JPEG format. I also think the image gets a little softer towards the edges, especially compared to Action 3. Now let's talk about some things I discovered compared to Action 3. While you're filming continuously, Action 4 divides a file every 20 minutes Action 3 divides a file every 5 minutes, which means there's gonna be less files with Osmo Action 4. When you go to snapshots, we have last setting options, which is something we don't have on Action 3. In the end, I had a great time shooting with this camera, as you can see from the footage as well. The footage looks a lot better compared to Action 3 which looks a little better than Action 2. Action 2 is my favorite action camera in the world. Well, thanks so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think about DJI Osmo Action 4 in the comment section below. What did you think about the things that they added? What did you think about the things they removed? What did you think about the image quality? I cannot wait to read your comments. And of course, the most important thing, you know, what did you think about the beard being gone? Yeah, where's the beard? Where, where did the beard go? Where, the, where is it? Where is it? It was too hot. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah. So thank you so much, DJI, once again, for sponsoring this video and letting me do my thing. Until I see you guys next time, take really good care of yourselves and ho shakala.